All right, we've got another Ford ECU here. This is a uh, 0506 Escape 3.0. And as you can see, the customer said they sent it to another place uh, off eBay. And it came back with the exact same codes that they sent it. Okay, and they say it looked like it wasn't open, but it, it's hard to say. They did put their little stickers on there. Uh, there's no hole in the back. And this isn't cut, so I know they didn't go into the back of it, which for the misfire repair on these, you have to go into the back of it. Um, so let, let's see what they did. I bet you they did not replace the buffer on the back of the board. And they thought just doing the front was enough. That is a uh, rookie mistake for these. All right, let's uh, crack into it here. Ah, man, they they didn't. They opened it. They didn't seal it. So, um, that's that's a huge miss, whoever this company was, that they didn't reseal the ECU after they worked on it. That will 100% allow water to come in this ECU and just completely wreck it. Especially these are mounted right under the front windshield. Um, so, so, yeah, that's, that's not very good. Who is this company? It says... Um, it says automotive scientific. Let me see if I can see with the microscope better. Maybe, maybe they just forgot this one. Okay, so it says automotive scientific incorporated or auto ecu.com. I hope that they don't do this on all of their ECUs because that is a that is a bad thing to do. All right, so I can see that they replaced all six drivers, so that's that's good. They have a, a lot of solder here on there. I mean that, that's okay, ugly, but you know it's okay. Uh, they did replace both of these current sense resistors. And they also replaced this front buffer. Uh, let me go under the scope here again for you guys. Okay, now this is another problem. All right, so if you look at the drivers, you see they say uh, they say 5503GM, right? So that's a Ford mask part number. That's not a real part number. So all of these drivers are all counterfeit knockoff drivers. It should not be in here. The only reason somebody would put these is because they're trying to buy parts based off of the old part number, which doesn't exist because they were, you know, internal parts of Ford. So the only ones you can buy are counterfeit knockoff ones, you know, out of China, but that's not something you should put back in there. You just put in normal IGBTs. I mean, that's it's silly to put these. And th these are probably even more expensive than just buying real drivers. Uh, uh, let me see what the buffer was, if they got the right one. Should be... See, I'm not sure if that's right. It should be a 7402. This is a 102. I don't know if that's the same or not. That, that may be okay, but I'm going to change it anyway. I don't want to use what they bought already got there. Mm. And I'm gonna I'm just gonna end up changing everything. Tell you the truth. But we can test it first to make sure that it's not working. I have to program a key to it. So uh give me one second while I get all that set up. So a really weird thing with this computer here. I tried several different tools including IDS and I haven't been able to get security access to add a key. R really weird. 
I've never seen that before. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off the EEPROM here and just I'm going to EEPROM a key just because I want to be able to test it. But uh, let me go ahead and just pull the EEPROM off. All right, so I've got my key that I've EEPROMed here. Uh, let's go ahead and give it a try. So I'm going to ignition on. Look, I got the ignition on. And now I am going to uh, start it up. And there we go. We see uh, these six lights right here. So just ignore these. So those six are the fuel injectors. And all six injectors are working as they should. And these six much dimmer ones are for the um, ignition coils. And as we can see, we, we are missing coil one. So it goes coil one, two, three, four, five, six. And we are missing coil one. All right, so let's hook up our oscilloscope and see if we can see what signal we're missing. Most likely you're gonna be missing the um, signal to drive the MOSFET. So the oscilloscope is open there in the top left of the screen. I'm going to check the outputs of all the uh, drivers here. And I'm going to start with this bottom one. In fact, let me, if I can, I can't remember the order. I think it's one, three, two, four, five, six, I think. All right, it could, this could be four and this could be two. And this is five and six. But uh, let's just start with this bottom one here, which I, I know is six. Okay, so this is a good output. This one is outputting properly. We, get, we can see a little bit better there. Okay, let's go to this one. Same thing, that looks good. Go to this one. Looks good. Let's go to, I believe, number five there. Looks good. Uh, this is number three okay and this is number one this is the one that's not working and we can see it's not being pulled low so you know we're getting the power from the fuse box in this case my tester here and the mosfet is oh, i'm sorry not the mosfet the igbt is supposed to be pulling it low when it wants to fire and that would light the lamp so if you look at these ones, we can see it being pulled low. Okay, you can zoom in here. I guess I set a trigger, might make it a little bit easier. Okay, so we can see it being pulled low there. And this is the number one again, the bad one. And we can see it is not being pulled low. All right, so now let's check the um, the gate control for each one. I'm going to start here again at this bottom driver, which uh, I'm pretty sure is number six. Let me use a little test point here. All right, so now this one we can see is a little bit different. This one is actually um, a high signal, a uh, high low voltage signal there so it goes up to five volts and whenever you see that five volts here then it, it will pull the transistor down on the back so if i was to hook up a second probe you, you'd be able to see that i guess i can do that real quick all right so red is going to be the output blue is going to be the gate Okay. Why is that not coming on there? Okay, there it is. All right, there. So there's our red, and we can see it's being pulled low at the same time that our gate is being driven high. 
All right, so we're going to go to the next one. I'll just do them both again here. Sorry, my red probe is being a little delayed there. There we go. We see the same thing there. Let's go to this next one. That one's good. Go to this one. We see that's good. Okay, we're going to go to driver number three. That's good. And now we're going to go to the faulty one. That is not being pulled low. Let's check the gate control. And that's pretty weird. Our gate control is completely high. But I'm assuming that there's probably um, no, no actual current there. It's probably just my probe picking that up there. So let, let's remove this. Uh, let's remove this transistor here and see what happens. And Mike can see the the gate signal a little bit better. If we're lucky, it would just be the IGBT that's bad. But you know, I I know these units, so I know that's not the case. That they pretty much the uh, buffer on the back pretty much always goes bad and in fact that's usually what goes bad to make the drivers themselves uh, start making the coils fire too much and then they overheat and kill the drivers that way All right, so we have the bad one off there, and let's check this again. All right, so I'm just going to do the gate here. Let me uh, get it get it going again here. So I'm going to ignition on, go ahead and get it running. Got the engine running right now. And let's see, let's check this one just for a reference. There we go. Now we're going to go back to this one. And yeah, I don't know. That's weird. It's showing that it's high. Like I said, it, it must just not have anything behind it. It's kind of just a, a phantom voltage. But uh, for sure, we're going to have to take this board out, get to the backside, and replace the, you know, the. Uh, logic gate that's back there. I think first I'm just going to go ahead and replace all this because like I said, I'm not leaving any of this. And I looked into this part, this HC102. There's no such thing. I think that's probably what the old mask part number was. I, I should have known because it says Phillips and they don't make Phillips ships anymore. So it's, it's a really, you're supposed to have a 7402 and they're old mass number was uh, 102 or something dumb like that and like I said this place that repaired this they they don't know how to actually order actual real parts so they just buy counterfeit parts that have the original fake names on there uh, I'd, I'd be wary about sending my units to places like that um, a lot of the counterfeit parts, you know, n not very good. Some of them are okay, but a lot of them are not. But anyway, let me get all this stuff removed, and then uh, we'll, we'll talk about going to the back of it. So got everything replaced. I uh, got the board back in the case here because these tend to get very hot when you turn them on. Uh, but I got everything replaced with authentic top of the line parts. Um, I use on semi IGBTs, and uh, of course we have the you know OEM Dale current sense resistors. And the gates I use are Toshiba. Let me switch to this. 
And this is all new stuff from uh, authorized distributors. So, you know, it's, it's kind of an important thing in this kind of work. You don't want to be dealing with unknown parts. Okay, and I replaced I replaced everything, including that that gate there, uh, the one on the back, and uh, all the IGBTs and the two current sense resistors there. All, all that is brand new. So let's hook it up and see if we have a little bit better result this time than when it first come in. Okay, so power is currently off. Uh, let me get my little chip here. So I'm going to ignition on. Okay, and now I'm going to run the engine. And there we go. We have all six coils going. All right, so just like before, red is the output. Blue will be the gate or base. See there, make this a little bit smaller, and there you go. We have our base being driven high, and we have our output being brought low. So that working just as it should now. So, last thing I have to do is I'm going to apply some conformal coating. because the board come with it so anytime there's conformal coating on the unit I work on I always put it back alright and then we just have to seal the case And there we go, one successfully repaired escape uh, PCM.